Hi, how's it going? Hope you're well. I just had to take a little break in between marking papers to look at something which I've been learning about, which I think is super cool, and that is Morton Codes. So imagine that you have some region of space and you want to represent that region as a, a one-dimensional array. So let's say, for instance, you want to fill this up with four elements, and I'll just name these elements. Okay, no worries. So we just need some sort of some sort of way of traversing these elements and popping them into the array. So very commonly we'd sort of run across, so A, B, C, D. <clears throat> but as you'll see later, this doesn't generalize that well. So instead there's something called a Morton code where we sort of fill across in this Z pattern. And I know what you're saying. Yes, <laughs> this is actually what I said before, but I'll, I'll do a bigger example so that this, so that this makes sense. As a matter of fact, scratch all of this. This example, not that great. Let's say we have this pattern, and we want to encode this pattern into some sort of array in some sort of order. So the standard way to go would be to go across, and then down, and then across, and down, just like that. So for a given position, we would have, um, say, the position for something, the given x, y would be something like um, the x plus the width times the y, or something. This is like the standard linear tiling mode that you might be familiar with. But the problem with this is that if I want to access, <coughs> sorry, if I want to access just this little bundle of pixels here, then <coughs> my chance of a cache hit, um, my chance of a cache miss goes way up because I um, have my cache line. Let's say my cache line is only four pixels. This is a, a contrived example, but let's say my cache line is only four pixels. So when I load this pixel in, all of these pixels get loaded into my L1 cache and I have access to them. But then when I go to load in this next pixel, we do a cache miss. So we have to load in the next four pixels. Jeez, this is messy. There's like four pixels that we're not accessing and that's really bad. So this sort of thing is fine if we expect the underlying region in space to have this sort of row column structure. But if we're just looking at little bundles, it's better to use a Morton code or a Morton order or a Z order. And the reason I'm looking into this is I'm looking into approximate agglomerative, ugh, bad algorithm name, first thing, but approximate agglomerative clustering for um, BVH construction. and this is where I started learning about this stuff. So the basic idea is that we have this Z order, and then we pop over and traverse the next little region, and then we pop over and traverse the next region, and so on. So the benefit of this is that rectangular regions get loaded into cache lines. Also, it's really good for spatial ordering, but... Um, let me go through all of this. So if I were to look at this in memory, we have this sort of weird skippy sort of structure, but <clears throat> the benefit of this underlying structure is that, <clears throat> sorry, really sorry. Uh, the benefit this, of this underlying structure is that local regions, in 2D get loaded into local regions in the space. So if I want to get this little top square here, I don't have to skip across. I can actually just access, it's that region there. That's my cache line. That's the four pixels that I want. And another benefit of this, besides just being neat and cool, and besides the fact that it also gen generalizes to three dimensions, is that this is also a way that GPUs can represent textures in memory. So if you've ever wondered in Vulkan what that optimal tiling is versus linear tiling and why it's so messed up, like if we've got optimal tiling, why is it that we can't just load and store pic uh, pixels? The reason is that it uses probably something like this Z ordering where um, little regions are local. Um, all right, so I'll just pop in a demo. All right, so here we are with an example. This is my little pet ray tracer. 
when I say pet, I'm not just talking about this one. So what I've done here is I've made this buffer, this material color buffer that we're rendering to. The original one was 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. And then that was getting rendered down to an 800 by 600 pixel color buffer. And we could say, well, isn't it strange that we're allocating such a big size to something that's going to be rendered down to such a small color buffer? Isn't that wasteful? We'll have a look at this. Let's give this a shot. There we have it. We're currently rendering at 1800, pretty close to 1900, just under 2000 frames per second. Ignore the weird aspect ratio. That was just a temporary correction for the fact that the color buffer was um, originally a different dimension. Okay, so this is rendering at the exact number of pixels as what the, the window actually is. Now, let's switch this around. So instead of doing that, we're allocating more space than we need to, up to 1024 by 1024. Isn't that wasteful, you say? Well, have a look at this. Now we're up to full resolution, a horrendously wasteful 1024 by 1024 pixels, and it, performance has improved to 3100 frames per second. It's quite a bit more. It's about 1300 frames per second more than we were doing before, or something. So why is that? I thought about this for the longest time, and I, I felt like it had to be a cache issue, like a cache miss in memory or something. And now that I've learned about this Morton code, I would bet, I would bet that allocating a texture size which isn't a power of two must somehow introduce inefficiencies in the Morton code representation of the texture, if that's what's happening. I don't know, I could I could be wrong, but I'm just, I'm weirded out that I'm allocating a larger texture than I need, but because it's a power of two, it becomes more efficient. And I think that's super cool. Anyway, so yeah, that was, that's the real life example. Very interesting. So there you go, you've seen a, a demo of like a, a practical example of this stuff, or what I think is this stuff, but anyway. So then the next question is, is how does this stuff work? So let me look at the, the two by two example first. Okay, so if we were to encode this in the, um, in the array, then the position we're going for, first of all, we have zero, zero, and then we have one, zero, then zero, one, and one, one. And then if we were to read that back, this is actually um, zero, 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 001 is the position in the array. So it turns out that the way we're doing this is we are interleaving. So we have um, our coordinate is of the form x naught y naught. <clears throat> Sorry. And what we're doing is we are taking, we're basically swapping the x and y. So that maps to the position where. Um, the x naught digit in binary is the um, first position in this array, if that makes sense. So then the x goes to the first position, here the x goes to the first position, and the x goes to the first position, and then the y digit comes on as a second digit. So we have the y to the second, y to the second. Oh, what am I thinking? y to the second, y to the second. I swear, binary math is not hard. I, f I find this very easy, for real, joking. Okay, so that's fine. What about a larger example? Let's go with a four by four. Um, I just write out the X coordinate. So we have, um, And actually, let's just look at that top, that top region. So we're supposed to be binding like this. <clears throat> we're supposed to be binding like that. And so this will be um, region, that subregion like that. Okay. So we have some coordinate where we're using two bits to represent each of the coordinates. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to interleave it. So I'm going to take the zeroth x bit, then the zeroth y bit, the first x bit. You know what I'm saying here. So let's verify that. So if we look at this one, <clears throat> then yeah, all these bits are zero. So this is going to map that point there. <clears throat> okay, so here we have going to start with a one for that zero and then the rest all zeros. So yep, that's going to map here. And then this next one. Okay, so we've got zero and then one and then zero and zero. And then for this last one here, we have one for the X, one for the Y, then zero for the X and zero for the Y. And that will in fact map there. Okay, so that's the basic idea of Morton codes and I've gone through an example as well of how they can lead to optimal texture accesses and yeah, I mean, I guess that'll be it. I find this stuff super cool. So yeah, see you guys again soon with another little thing. All right, bye. Bye.